Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll be with a few students. Um, I, uh, of course, record it, record it so they can watch it later. Um, I want to go through uh, quite a few different uh, uh, submissions this morning to give you some uh, general feedback uh, so you can get started in your next project. The uh, see the next project is due to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, major project three is due July twenty fourth. So today is the uh, where is today the ninth. So we basically still have two weeks. Um, when I say the 24th, that is 9 a.m. the 24th, so that's Tuesday morning, so I've given you all night if you want to work all night, but presuming you don't, um, the 23rd is uh, really the, the due date. Uh, so I'm going to try to go through uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 of these pages, these uh, submissions, to give you an idea of what um, is likely to downgrade your papers and so forth. Um, this one is pretty good, actually. Um, we have a variety in, uh, in uh, headline sizes. Um, there is competition between the headline at the uh, bottom of the page, uh, Welcoming Ramadan, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the one at the top of the page. Um, I would try to make the top one a little bit uh, uh, bigger than than the smaller one or than the lower one. Um, just by position, you're saying the lower one is not as important, and so uh, and and also there's another aspect to that is this uh, the the smaller the story with the smaller headline. That headline is big enough, except that is a lot of gray area on that one page. Uh, that little piece of uh, of art on it is not real, real powerful, and uh, and it also goes to to uh, another point is that I asked again some people don't always listen in class or don't understand me I don't know, but the the requirement of this project was to put start five stories in the front page. Uh, this one started three stories in the front page, which in some ways gives that person an advantage, but this is a case where it's not an advantage. This demonstrates the problem. It's actually you want more headlines on the front page. And so you could have used, uh, this one could have been better if it had another story on the front page um, in order to uh, uh, break up that gray in that, in that right uh, corner. So you need to, uh, first off, listen. <laughs> um, because most people did get the instructions, uh, only a few people did not have uh, enough stories on the front page. So, obviously, some people do listen. Um, the uh, let me blow it up a little bit here, and so we take a little bit closer look. And let me. Need to. Uh, I'm not sure. This appears to, uh, in essence, be um, a, a summary sentence. Not really. It's more like a more like a pullout quote. In fact, it does have quote marks around it. Um, that's not a place where we would put pullout quotes. I demonstrated pullout quotes last week, so that's more uh, along the line of what we expect from pullout quotes. Um, this uh, isn't even a complete sentence. There's no period at the end of uh, harmonious. So be sure to do it right. Uh, and for the size, it's not very big compared to the headline. Uh, now, summary sentences, as I, meant, as I mentioned, are the idea of them is to be smaller than, uh, or be no, it's to be around 14 point, not much bigger than that, if ever. Uh, this might be a case where it could go up to 16 point or something just in order to uh, uh, be a little bit more, fulfill a little more of the kind of uh, subheadline role, but, but summary sentences are not intended to be as big as, as, as uh, 
uh, as the subheadlines. Um, so, I mean, frankly, I I prefer subheadlines. I think they're they are have more graphic appeal, and they uh, they they uh, to me are actually easier than summary sentences to write. Uh, and that's one reason why this isn't a summary sentence. This is a pull out quote. That's because I think the person realized writing a summary sentence is not easy. It's like basically writing a second uh, lead without being redundant to the lead, which is, is not easy to do. You have to kind of get used to that idea. And so I doubt that anybody in this class is going to do a real good job of writing summary sentences. So I really suggest you don't write summary sentences. You write headlines, subheadlines. But that's up to you. I'm letting you make that choice. But this is not a summary sentence. This is a pull-out quote, and that's not where you put a pull-out quote, uh, typically. And it needs a period uh, to be a complete sentence. Uh, the uh, one could question um, the cropping of this picture. There's a lot of dead space. I know you you kind of uh, are juggling two concerns. One one is you want it to be big enough to uh, to be the dominant photo, uh, but on the other hand, uh, and which might be a little bit difficult if you uh, crop this. Uh, much more. Uh, at least if, if you do, it, it would push it down farther. So you have a, you'd have a, a problem with uh, your layout if you made this picture, if you cropped this picture and still made it big enough. Uh, but that's, that is what basically happens by your choice of a photo. That's one of the things that determines how you're going to lay out. And so um, by, if you, if you uh, crop this picture properly, uh, it might, um, you might end up going uh, to, uh, in essence, and I'm not saying not for the whole page, but for this section, you might end up going uh, to a five column format and making this two deep columns instead of one, instead of uh, uh, three columns, uh, and, be, and so that, um, Anyway, it ends up going deeper, however, uh, by the fact that you cropped it. So you still have that, that power. You may also end up pushing these other stories lower uh, because of it. Another thing that could happen is that uh, you could end up with a one-column story next to it because you're, you're trying to save space. Um, and so you, you do a, a deep two-by-whatever uh, two column by cropping this. You make it actually deeper, um, but you uh, uh, you leave a, end up leaving a column on the right side or something for a one column story. I mean, it, it starts by your selection of a photo and pri by proper cropping and everything, it will dictate how you lay out your page, whether you like it or not. Uh, you don't, in some ways, uh, this puzzle does control you as much as you control it. Uh, so it's you know, once you make a decision on a on a photo, now that's where it starts controlling you to some degree. And so this this uh, picture should be better cropped than this, uh, and it would change the entire format. But one of the options is to uh, uh, have it change the format to a, a you know four stories on the front page, which was uh, kind of the minimum and, and should have been five stories. So. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it would change everything. We have, uh, again, this area here is very gray. Uh, we have another pull-out quote. Uh, this one would be considered more in a more acceptable area. Um, it, uh, you know, rather than at the start of a story, that's, again, kind of reserved for subheadlines and summary sentences. We're very tight in this area. Uh, first off, the story itself, if I were to blow up a little more, it looks, uh, it doesn't, I don't think I need to blow up anymore. It's, if the text in the story itself uh, is not touching the box, it's so very close to it. You can't let it t be that tight. It's also quite tight to the story to the right of it. Uh, so I'm guessing that this person tried to, um, well, they didn't, 
as I demonstrated, you have to, in order to do this uh, easily and properly, you need to pull out a ruler guide out from the ruler and put it uh, a little bit inside your uh, graphic box and, uh, and then let, the, let your columns adjust accordingly. You know, uh, put your text box on the, on the green line, not on the blue line, uh, the column guide. Uh, you end up with this. You, you can't do that. Um, as far as headlines go, uh, taking a look at that a second, uh, there is no verb in the uh, headline. Uh, that's another reason I have a subheadline. The rule is that I gave you was uh, if you're using a, uh, a, a more or less a label head uh, in the headline, then you need a verb in the subheadline. And uh, we are, again, I'm kind of pushing towards the subheadlines on most stories. And this one dictates it because there's no verb in the headline. Um, this is a uh, this headline on the Chinese, the, the IELTS stor uh, story, um, it has a verb, although it's misspelled, improved, instead of improved. Watch your editing. A um, couple of things wrong with it. Uh, besides that, uh, you, you should go ahead and reverse this and make this an active, this is not an active uh, uh, headline in that uh, to be active, you bring up the verb up and you say something like uh, Chinese students improve Yelts uh, exam scores or something. Uh, so you use the present tense, you get back to the present tense uh, with the standard uh, uh, you know, subject, verb, uh, object, uh, construction. Uh, so this, uh, uh, a couple of problems besides misspelling, uh, again, not an active verb. Um, and again, not a subheadline to, to help uh, rectify that. Um, here we have the verb not really uh, acting as, uh, well, it does what, what the textbook says don't do. You don't start with the verb. Um, and so again, um, the, the normal active verb uh, construction is uh, Chiman welcomes uh, Ramadan celebration or something like that, but um, it's still not in the standard uh, headline format. So there's not a headline on the front page that is actually in the, the regular headline format. So it's going to get some deduction based on headlines. Again, headlines are 25% of the grade, so it's important. On page two, we, we have uh, You should, I see we, we've got a jump line here. I'm not going to blow it up. Uh, you can see it more or less up there. We have a, a jump line, um, a jump to and a jump from. Uh, don't start the story on the same, on the same line with the jump line. That looks odd. Um, and I don't know that I've ever seen that done before. Um, so the first word of the new of the new paragraph should be on the next line. Should start on the next line. Um, we have let's see we have the same problem up here. Yeah, this story has no indents. So again, you need to watch your indents. The other two stories do, but this one does not have an indent either here or on page two. But you see, it's it doesn't look right just because it has no indent. So you it looks uh, very grave. The indents help make it appear less gray, which is helpful, you know, which is graphically is more pleasing. And anyway, this is very gray just because there's no indents. Um, having the, 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 uh, by the uh, caption on the side um, is okay, you know, once in a while. It's, it's graphically pleasing once in a while, but you don't do it too often. So, you know, having one on the front page, one on the second page mm -hmm. is questionable. Uh, this one is also extremely short. Um, that you, you expect some white space. If you're going to put it on the side, you accept that that uh, white space is a, is a good thing. But captions are typically longer than this. Also, this is not in uh, captions are to be in present tense. Um, this is in past tense, so it's uh, not written properly. 
Um, I mentioned before, strip off the uh, date lines because we actually don't want a date on it. Again, we're trying to make it timeless. We want to try to make a newspaper that people will read. Um, I'm not even sure I'm going to actually produce this version of the headline. Uh, I mean, of the of the newspaper, since we have a a uh, tabloid newspaper coming up, and by then you'll know how to do it better. So rather than have and they have the same stories in them. So since they have the same stories in them anyway, um, I would uh, I might before we actually post it on Facebook and other social media, I might wait for your tabloid version. Uh, but uh, Anyway, again, don't uh, don't leave the uh, date lines on your stories because uh, we don't want a date. And as I mentioned last week, if you're going to have a a date line without a date, in other words, all you're really having is where it's at, where it's from, it needs to have a particular reason why why where where you're writing it from makes a difference. And writing a uh, with local newspapers, they do not add any date lines with local stories. Uh, they, they put in a date line if it's from a city outside of their, of their city, for example. And so with a chime in newspaper, we don't they need to put chime in as a date line, um, so forth. The, uh, putting the headline at the bottom of the story, uh, looks a little odd I don't I would not do that um, also again uh, we have we need to fill the space as much as possible and this is way shorter than the space um, it, it's very very abnormal I put it that way to put the headline at the bottom like this because what happens and just from the strategy of a, of a layout the first thing people are going to look at is the headline. And the headline then is in the lower left, then they have to go back up the uh, higher to the to the right to get to the start of the story. It kind of goes against the uh, nature of, uh, of reading patterns. So you're, you're asking people to, uh, to do something they're not used to doing, and frequently they just don't. Uh, they just go on to the next page. Again, uh, Well, some of these paragraphs have indents, some don't. Uh, you obviously should have indents. Um, okay. In order to uh, make uh, vertical justification, it appears they added net just an extra blank line. That looked kind of odd. Uh, again, you need to either put a little, just a little bit extra space between lines, in other words, increase your letting, or put a little bit of space between multiple paragraphs, but you don't want to put it all in one spot. Uh, you want to spread out, if, you, if you're trying to put some extra space in a column to make it line up properly, you want to, you want to spread it over more than just one spot. Uh, that, that doesn't look quite right. So. Um, it, it it almost suggests that gee what is this a pull out quote what is going on here so uh, when you're trying to achieve uh, vertical justification uh, add a little space at multiple spots instead of all at one spot uh, up here above it uh, not uh, adequate vertical justification these stories uh, uh, so a lot of little things there there are places uh, I typically try to make put the uh, the jump line make it vertically justified with the other lines, and that's pretty easy to do. Uh, but then there's excessive space here above it, so basically there should be another line or two from page two should still be on page one. You have room for at least two more lines of text here on page one, especially if you bring the the jump line down to be even with the other lines. So most of these. Stories in the front do have vertical justification, so I think the uh, person knows how to do it. They maybe got in a hurry and didn't do it in a couple of spots here. But, okay, let me go to another one.
So I want to go up and let you see the whole page before we, not two pages, but at least one page to get an idea of the overall layout. Um, the, uh, the design in, in general is um, okay. The, uh, the picture that is the dominant picture um, there's not a lot of cropping you can do for it, but it's just a picture without, with a lot of dead space in it. I mean, you'd, I mean the cropping would be in the right in the middle of it, in a sense. If you're trying to, if you're trying to make this, uh, uh, have less dead space, the most of the dead space is in the center of the photo. And so it's not really possible to, to, uh, ethically and properly crop this photo. You're getting a lot of backs of heads. In this photo, it's not a great photo. I recognize you have to. You well, that's, I was going to say you have to do with what you have, but that's not true. I did give you permission to take new photos if you wanted to. And this is a photo that could have been retaken if you had, if somebody had taken the, the opportunity to do that. One of the easier ones to take another picture for. Um, but for that uh, reason, I mean, if you. I don't know, we just uh, have some, some photos on this, some art on this page that make it, um, that hurt the, the, the page overall. Just that photo is not a great photo. Then we have uh, the line art in left and right. Uh, the photo on the GST down at the lower left. Um, it maybe it would have been better if, if it were bigger. Um, again, that would require a redesign of the page, but uh, uh, that's probably a more interesting pi picture than the one in the, uh, um, you know, the, the local one, even though it's, I don't know, not a great photo. It has more going on in the, inside the photo than this one with so much dead space in it. Um, this one actually might be even a, might be better. I don't know. Anyway, it is a problem. It's a challenge, which is why I, I suggested before you ever got started to real, you know think about what you had and if you necessarily take some more photos. Um, a lot of you as writers were lazy with your photos. And so that impacted you as the editors, which is, again, one reason why I gave each team your own, your own stories to work on, because you as, as the writers were lazy in some cases. So this is a you problem that you created. You didn't take good enough photos. Um, and this is one of the lessons, hopefully, that you learn from that, that from doing this is that the photos that the reporters and photographers take have a huge impact on the work of the editors. And so if you as editors can't control, can't make sure, don't dictate that, that the reporters do their job right, they make you look real bad. Um, and now in this case, you are the reporters. Uh, uh, that that made you look bad, so to speak. So, uh, you know, I gave you a chance to try to rectify that, suggested you as teams consider what you had to work with, uh, because this is what the results were, is you, you had a hard time doing a good page because you didn't have uh, the, the right art. Uh, so, um, generally the design is okay, it's just the primarily the problem is uh, lack of good art for the page. And uh, again, sometimes even, as I've mentioned before, sometimes it's the art that dictates which stories you put towards the top. Um, I'm not a great fan necessarily of the GST story, but it had better art uh, than the career services story. I agree the career services is probably is a more important story for the students but you don't have good art with it. And so now you get put in a position as an editor, do I put a less important story higher in the page because it has good art, or do I put the most important, you know, the more important uh, story to, to, you know, higher up in the page, but it doesn't have good art? Do I ruin my design because I'm choosing a story that doesn't have good art? Uh, so you as the editor are stuck once you get this, this set of stories and, and, and photos, you're kind of stuck. Um, so 
uh, again, you, you'd be sending some pretty harsh messages back to your photographers, whether they're the reporters themselves or, or, or full-time photographers. You're going to be saying, hey, we need better art for this stuff because um, this isn't good art. Um, so anyway, that's uh, the position you, you end up putting yourself in. Uh, um, you as the reporters put yourselves in. Uh, with the top story here, uh, too much space in this subheadline. Need to fill it white space. Uh, the top, the headline at the top uh, is uh, uh, is fine. Um, it's in the proper. Uh, it's an active verb uh, with the main headline. The uh, secondary headline also in the right form. It's just left a bunch of white space. Uh, as I've said in class, I will. The, the professional expectation is within three let characters. Um, that, that second line needs to be within three characters of the first line, or of the longer line, let me put it that way. The shorter line needs to be within three characters of the, of the longer line. I told you I'd probably look the other way if you went to four characters, because you, you're not used to doing this. But this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten lines short, or ten characters short, and that has to be penalized. Um, this one, the second uh, headline here, uh, uh, first off, it's lacking. Uh, it's not an active verb format again. Um, the uh, the subheadline, if you can read it, is uh, in active verb format, but it uh, has a short line here, uh, but quite a bit. Uh, it's not really... Um, wouldn't be that hard. Maybe it is, uh, again, in getting the lines to line up, but, uh, uh, you know, Chiman establishes uh, Media Center uh, as publicity platform. Uh, again, you'd have to maybe wrestle with it to get to work. Uh, uh, and that's where you get to your thesaurus also, establishes, sets up, uh, creates, uh, you know, there's a number of verbs there that you could use to help uh, make your words end up uh, uh, equalizing uh, on the lines or, or, or help your uh, verbs be active and your lines to equalize. Uh, this one, as I said, is within the uh, my standard, so that won't be penalized there. The one down below it, uh, the subheadline is quite a, the, this bottom line, particularly the top line, is a little bit more than we'd like. The bottom line is too much uh, more than we like. Um, this one here, uh, no verb in the main headline, uh, but it does have one in the subheadline. Um, do not, now let me blow it up a little bit so you can see it better. We don't let uh, words break or be hyphenated in headlines. Uh, so that this is a problem. Um, also, you need to become used to headlinees. Again, a and and the are typically left out of a, of a headline. Uh, the articles a and and the and the. Uh, this one has the up here uh, unnecessarily. Uh, you kind of get used to the way it sounds, but uh, in, he in English headlinees, uh, the, the, the word the is not needed here. It's not needed down here. Um, and that you just need to get used to that, that sound uh, if you're not already. Uh, this... Uh, uh, drop cap has a space in front of the U. Try to get the spaces out. It, it's not needed when you have a drop cap uh, for the that for that one paragraph only. The other paragraphs need to be indented, but this one does not need to be indented. So um, when I'm setting up my my uh, style, I make sure that the, my uh, drop cap style does not have a, a space on it. Uh, 
Uh, again, uh, th well, this is a little bit of a short subheadline, uh, not just a short line, but the, the it's a small type. The headline itself is small type, however, so uh, one could uh, justify the small type. It, it is probably about half the size of the main headline. Uh, but um, so you might be able to live with that, but you still need to fill the space regardless. The extra space between words here and this in space, a lot of extra space. Uh, need to fill that space. Uh, again, starting with a verb, the textbook says don't start the verb you want to go in the active form as much as possible and that's you know your subject verb in present tense um, this one might be okay uh, because of the nature of the story this might be an exception where and there are exceptions by the way even though the textbook says don't start with the verb there are exceptions to that there are command sort of of uh, headlines and this would be a story that might have a command headline uh, in that it's trying to suggest that all students need to uh, uh, be aware of the bullying around them so it, it is maybe maybe a command headline is appropriate for that um, but that should be the exception not the rule add too much space here at the end of these headlines Uh, the not only does it, is it start this headline starting with the verb, but it's uh, doesn't make even sense having a command uh, headline here with this with this topic. Um, so remove would be in the right form of a removal of GST benefits. Uh, chime and students would be uh, more the uh, would be the right. Uh, word form re removal of um, but uh, yeah you might uh, find a way to rework that to fill out the space um, and I'd have to I need my in order to think of headlines I need my fingers on the keyboard basically I need to try stuff real quick Try to come up with one that with one that works. Um, in this case, you have a number of options: uh, removal of, and then GST. Can there would be some uh, um, some uh, synonyms you could say of GST uh, that might even be clearer? You know, sales tax. Uh, might might be a, a way of wording that and that might kick benefits over uh, to the next line and then you decide well maybe you don't uh, it doesn't quite fit in the next line but maybe it would if you took chiming out um, I don't know you, you start wrestling with it and trying and letting your fingers you know do the talking for you here trying to make it fit uh, but that's uh, anyway too much white space in both of them uh, and the wrong verb form here or in this case, word form removal would not would be a, a, a noun instead of a verb if you went through removal. Re, uh, yeah, removal. Um, page two. Again, big gap here. Uh, need to close up these gaps. Have a split headline here. Can't have that. Uh, another split word and two split words in this uh, headline. Can't have that. Too much space here. I mean, there's a reason why headlines are worth 25% of this grade, is because they're hard to do, uh, and and I need you to work on them. Headlining is one of the most important things you do, and it is hard. Uh, there's no, it's hard to do really good headlines consistently. Uh, even if all you're doing is doing summary, let alone trying to be a cle be clever, uh, clever headline writers get promoted real fast if they can be good and clever uh not in every headline but you know and maybe um on, on a full page maybe one of their headlines is clever you consider it a, a nice play on words somehow uh those those editors get promoted uh, who know how to write clever headlines but 
you have, at the minimum, to be a, a copy editor, you have to be able to write good headlines. Uh, some good summary headlines, and that's more more or less what what I pretty much stay with. I'm not a clever headline writer. I admit that. So, anyway, uh, so the main problem in this is is uh, uh, the headlines uh, will be the biggest problem in migrating it. Um, obviously, that as I said, there's uh, a photo here that's not an ideal photo. Um, being the dominant photo on the page, uh, not ideal. Um, but uh, that probably won't be uh, as big a concern as I graded as the headlines. Um, but I'd say by the time you get to, uh, when you get ready to do your tabloid, this is one that could be easily improved on. So you as a team, you as an individual, whatever you need to do, this is not a great photo to be your main photo. Uh, so you should kind of look at other options, but backs of heads, big empty spots, uh, uh, it, you know, just because the empty spot is in the middle of the photo doesn't make it a good photo. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, this can't be cropped a whole lot. It can be cropped a little bit to the right and a little bit above to make it a better photo even as it is. But it's not going to be a great photo because, again, what needs to be cropped is in the very center of the photo. Uh, so, which you can't do ethically, so just not a, a great photo. Okay, so um, let me go out and so we can see the uh, whole page a little better. Uh, this is a, a photo. This has been cropped a little bit, I think. Yeah, it has definitely. Um, I did uh, warn some people about this photo. You, you want to make this big enough so you can see the, the lecturer a little bit. And so this was cropped. Uh, a little, some of the stuff in the left was cropped in order to get uh, his image better and bigger. Um, and that's good. Uh, there's dead space at the top of the photo. Maybe could have been cropped a little differently, but but this is the case where you're trying to make this the dominant photo. Uh, you may be stuck again by your choice of, of uh, top photo. Uh, we see just at this uh, close-up view um, that the text is too tight. You need to learn how to push the text away from your photo. Um, I've demonstrated that several times, so you need to watch the video if you didn't catch it live, um, uh, you, you can't have the text that close to your photo. In this case, um, I mean, the photo really, probably the easiest thing is to make it a little smaller, um, because this is, uh, you have your standard columns, and this one is invading the first column, uh, perhaps again to make it uh, bigger, to make it more dominant on the page, but invading the column to the left by that small amount isn't going to make much difference. And in fact, the, the, the degree to which you uh, invade the, uh, the, the, the story on the left could have been compensated for by just cropping a little bit tighter on the right. Uh, you don't really need the complete lectern since the, the lecturer is over here. Uh, in fact, you don't really need the lectern at all. This could be cropped on the right side about in here and then crop some off the top and make it even bigger, uh, make the image inside of the photo even bigger by cropping some off the right, some off the top, and then uh, enlarging the photo. Uh, so, um, yeah, be careful with that. Um, typically in news uh, photos, you don't, this looks like a different sort of frame here. It's not just a line around it, it seems to, uh, perhaps be a, a, a double line around it, and one line is basically right on the photo. I'm not really sure what, what kind of frame they chose here. Uh, but it's not a normal frame. And, uh, I mean, a lot of newspapers don't frame their photos at all. That's, that's actually a whole other issue. Do you 
put a line around your photo, a, a, a graphic line around your photo. Uh, a lot of newspapers don't. I, I never have, or hardly have ever had, uh, uh, put frames on my photos um, in a newspaper. Uh, it seemed a little bit uh, more appropriate for magazines to me, but, uh, but there are newspapers who do it, so don't get me wrong. There are newspapers that do it, so I'm not uh, saying don't do it, but typically when they do it, it's a it's not usually the, even this not not this big of a line. This is at least one point, maybe bigger than one point, uh, and this one is something different that looks like a double line or something. Um, you don't want to maybe on a feature page where you have a huge picture. Um, and there's like one story in the page, so you know the feature pages have different rules than news pages. But you don't want to have too many different types of uh, frames on your photos. So this one over here doesn't seem to have the one in the upper right doesn't seem to have any frame. This one has a different type of frame, more of an artistic frame. This one has a uh, one point frame. Uh, anyway, you you end up with so many different types of frames that it looks like you don't know what you're doing. So you don't. Maybe that's true, but nonetheless, you're, you need to try to be more consistent. We're not trying. It's kind of like what I've said about using the, the verb to say. The more you ver use the ver verb to say instead of other verbs, the less attention it draws to itself. And most people that, that most students, when I tell this to, um, they kind of rebel at the idea until I have them read your local newspaper or we pull up one of these pages from, from uh from those 30 newspapers and almost every verb is to say. And they didn't bother to notice that in their whole lives. Why didn't they notice it? Because it's always to say. That's the whole point of using to say is you don't draw attention to it. And so you can read the pages for years and not realize that almost every verb, attribute, verb of attribution is to say uh, because it's not drawing attention to itself. And so it's kind of the same thing. Uh, unless you really are trying to draw attention, to, you're, you're doing something special with this photo, which again is more likely to be a feature page, you don't do a bunch of different things to them to draw attention to them. That's the wrong way to draw attention to them. Uh, so uh, while I appreciate you're learning the, the quark and you're trying different things, uh, this is one thing you would not do is, is have different framing, different frames or non-frames for different photos. Uh, that you just draw attention to itself. Um, I haven't gone to the full page yet, but I guess as long as I'm in tight here, we'll go, stay with this. So this is more of a uh, of a summary sentence. And uh, as far as summary sentences go, that's okay. Um, I was looking to make sure that this didn't steal the summary sentence basically from the lead. And maybe it is the original uh, lead, I don't know. But the, the, the paragraph below it is an adequate lead as well. So you have basically two leads. Uh, summary sentences can uh, have words split in them and so forth. That's, uh, it's handled like any other uh, text would be, except it's bigger. Uh, and bolder and so forth. Uh, so uh, that's okay. Uh, be careful uh, again with your headlines. Uh, this actually is, uh, and I think I may be consulted with a student on this that may have asked me about this. The, the original headline, headline, if this was what I'm thinking about, said Chiman is increasing student mobility. Well, is is an inactive verb by almost from the start. I mean, there's no activity, no action to the verb is. And so we very rarely use it in headlines. And I, and I, if this is the uh, one that I was explaining it to, but if not, this I know I, I have explained it to some students. Uh, we just take the verb is out in a case like this, which is what the student did. Uh, so your verb ends up being increasing as a we've talked about two forms of verbs one is if it's in the past we use present tense if it's in the future we use infinitive tense uh, decides to decide uh, but if it what if it's not present or past 
what if it's current? And that's when we use ING, the ING form is when it's current. So it's not past and it's not future. It is happening right now. So this is the right verb form we didn't talk about. If it's actually going on right now, and it's not past and not future, then we use the ING form. So this is the right form for, for, this, uh, uh, for this story. Uh, over here on the right, we have a, a grammar problem, a Sudanese. Um, presuming that's correct, and I'm kind of wrestling with whether uh, that's the right form of Sudanese to represent, uh, you know, it's an adjective, can it stand alone? I guess so. But uh, if that's singular, then the verb has to be enjoys, enjoys studying. And that would be make it a little bit longer too, so that would help altogether if it were just in the right, t uh, right form. Uh, looking down here, we have a big gap here, obviously. Uh, Chiman holds two IELTS exams on campus. Um, The uh, whether that's a news, whether that's appropriate headline, whether that's exciting enough to make a headline out of um, if this indeed is past tense, if it's for a past event, uh, why, it, why does it matter they held them in the past? I don't know if that uh, makes it interesting enough to make it into your headline. But that's one other issue. Um, we the subheadline should be lined up. Well, there's, there's two options with the subheadline. If you have a uh, hammerhead, then the subheadline can be flush right and go all the way uh, to the flush right. Um, it can be flush right if you uh, have a, uh, a side saddle headline where the headline's at the side and you're wrapping around the whole story, a box around the story. There are situations where you can go flush right. Uh, we don't justify headlines, don't do that. And this one doesn't do that. I'm just saying that some things we don't do with headlines, we don't, uh, we don't uh, justify them. Um, so occasionally they're flush right. That is, they're being pushed to the right. Uh, this, first off, the headline is too close to the, uh, to the picture. And secondly, why the subheadline doesn't line up, there's not a good justification for not lining the subheadline up with the main headline. Intent, indenting a subheadline doesn't, I, well, not something I remember ever seeing, and I don't see any real purpose for it, so I wouldn't do it. Um, I mean, both headlines are way short, uh, so that's problematic. Uh, devises is misspelled. Now, that definitely some work can be uh, had on uh, can be exerted on that uh, pair of headlines. Um, I don't know if this, uh, I'm presuming this was the original photo. Uh, the cropping becomes problematic here of you know, this line, this one going right through the person's head. And this, but excessive uh, dead space on the left. So you have one where you're going, I mean, if you're imagining you actually have the full photo, this is kind of bizarre in that you've cut somebody's head off on the right and on the left you have a bunch of extra space you don't need. So if there's more to the photo, it should be pushed to the left, obviously get rid of the dead space on the left and actually have the whole body of the, of the person on the right. Uh, I don't know what the original photo looks like, so I don't know exactly how this was done, but uh, the reader doesn't care whether uh, whether you had any control over it. All they know, this is really stupid looking uh, in the sense of extra space on the left and somebody's head split, split in half on the right. So they may not tell you that. They may not actually iterate that. But that's in essence what they're thinking is, well, what's wrong with this photo? Uh, it's cropped really stupid, you know. Um, now, again, you may not have had the whole photo. So then the question becomes, what, what do you do with it? If this is really the, the photo you had, to deal with, what do you do? I would at least cut off some of the side. Of the, if I'm going to make it tight, I'd be make it tight on the left, all, left also. 
and uh, blow it up a little bit. Um, anyway, that's hard to know what to do with that. Uh, caption a little bit too tight to the picture. Should be given a little bit of breathing space. Uh, pull out quote is fine, but too tight to the top and to the left and to the right is just too tight. You need to let it breathe. I showed you uh, last week how to, you know, this was had it in before I showed it. So uh, I understand that, but uh, hopefully you'll watch the video again and how to do the, uh, even though you don't absolutely have to do a, a shadow box that's better than this. Uh, in fact, I would say this, this heavy of a line around a box is very rare. They either don't put any line, they put a very narrow line, or they go to the shadow box. It's kind of, this is a really heavy line around this pullout quote, and that's not done very often. Uh, just um, no, no strong graphic purpose to have that big of a headline. Uh, having the color background is better. Um, I would go with a thinner line, go with uh, like a half point line. If you're not going to do a shadow box at all, I'd go with a half point line instead of this. A little bit too thick of a line, but definitely get the words away from the edge. And I showed you how to do that last week. Um, I think the person also blew up this picture a little bit. I, in the way it originally was, you couldn't see anybody. You, you couldn't even be sure as people look like ants down there or something. Uh, and that's, it's better to have cover less and let, actually let you see what is, what this is. Even this picture, if it were actually, if we were actually going to print it, uh, we wouldn't, this one would be very iffy uh, in that newspapers are printed on low quality paper that we call newsprint. And pictures, uh, run. The ink on in the picture starts running a little bit. You can't keep the quality of the picture uh, in a, a newsprint. A magazine by its very nature would allow a photo like this because it has nicer paper and the ink doesn't run as much. And so you have to be very careful if you're actually going to print uh, with, with a newspaper. Uh, of course, we're not going to print, so, so we can say this is uh, academic, but just you know, in getting used to working in a newspaper environment, you have to be very careful about something with fine details like this because of the fact that the, the ink runs. And you can't have small pictures as, as much as you can in, in, in a magazine that has nice paper com as compared to newsprint. Uh, you can't do it. Um, Again, uh, the definitely here is not needed. Uh, again, the person may be trying to fill out the space, uh, but uh, we don't want uh, headlinees. Again, the can usually be taken out. Um, and in this case, just grammatically, it seems uh, a little odd here. Uh, and also, there's an S at the end of Muslims, uh, Muslim, the Muslim students. Uh, the adjective form would just be Muslim. Um, and again, this is the is verb. That could be taken out. So if you're going to go inactive form, it would be something like Muslim students disappointed with, take out the, with loss of tradition. Uh, by the time you're done with that, you actually can make that headline a little bit bigger uh, if you wanted to. But you have the twice. You have R that can be eliminated. Uh, we have this extra space here. For no good reason. Um, anyway. Again, a lot of extra space on this second line, too much space. Um, lines too tight in here. We need to give this area down here room to breathe. Uh, it's too tight with the text inside of it, left and right, too tight to the headline below it. Uh, too tight above it, too tight every place. So you need to be very careful uh, within boxes not to make things too tight on the inside. And again, if you look at that, the video of what I was teaching about, even though it's about shadow boxes, it pertains to any box. Uh, you need to get the text away from the lines in, in any box. Uh, and that shows you how to do that. I don't know 
Well, I guess, okay, so this isn't really a caption. These are uh, quotes, kind of pull-out quotes. Um, again, we've got, I'm not sure I put the lines there at all. I, or if I did, maybe one, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, the dark line here, light line on the outside. Um, Maybe with a little bit more, this one, the, this uh, text is not touching the edges, but if it were even a little more white space, maybe it looked a little better. It's just something that looks a little odd about this. This uh, letting is tight, this letting is, is not tight, and yet this one goes below this one. So there's no reason for this to have loose letting, this one to have light letting. Um, uh, it's the whole thing is a little bit awkward. I uh, don't know exactly what the creator was trying to do there. Um, you know, vertical justification, watch that. This one's vertically justified, that's fine. Uh, very light face here. Um, so that's a little problematic there. Yeah, it's hard to read it at this, uh, at this blown up level even. Um, just looking real fast here to see what uh, this, except for this column, is justified. So again, you need to select some of these paragraphs and put a little more letting in them. Uh, not so much that it's real obvious, but they'll push this one line down to be even with the other ones. Um, this one is okay. The letting in that one's okay. This one's looks okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's go out. Uh, I never did look at the full page to to look at the overall design. Um, oops, too much. The page design is pretty good, actually. Uh, you have uh, the uh, major head, the major photo up the up the center uh, top of the page. Again, I you could it could be cropped even a little better than this, as I mentioned. Um, a smaller photo, center left. Uh, you have your uh, a small photo to the upper right. You have another photo center uh, at the bottom. It does a pretty good job of uh, as far as just breaking up the page, uh, not having too much gray space. Um, and there's you know things to do with some of the individual elements, but the overall design is pretty good. Um, this is the biggest headline here, uh, so it, one could uh, question what is the main story. Uh, this is slightly above the the uh, fold. Mm. Anyway, you just need to think about that, uh, along with you know filling out that space. Uh, a lot of headline here, um, if it's not the main story. Uh, then maybe it is supposed to be, um, but it's a little bit, a little bit low on the page to be the main story. I'll be wrestling with that a little bit. Your top story does not have to be your main story, however, and again, it can be lower. But this is just quite a bit low on the page to be your main story, uh, to have the biggest headline. This one I am going to go down and look at the whole page first uh, because this is a fairly small headline for the top, so I want to see what the whole page looks like. Um, okay, well, um, So looking at the overall format, um, we have quite a bit of gray in the lower right. I'd want to address something there. Uh, the, the biggest problem, if I'm even looking at it right, uh, definitely breaks modularity down here in the, in the uh, if I'm following this right, let me get my pen out here. This story starts here 
and goes below this other story is the way I'm seeing it. And we definitely don't do that. So this story apparently goes, it goes like this. So that's not modular by definition. It's not square, it's not rectangular. It's, uh, we just don't do that. So, and it doesn't seem like they'd be that hard to fix in that this, uh, apparently uh, this is a story here. I don't know what this, well, I'm not sure that photo's of. I think that's of food, so I think it goes with the canteen story. Um, I'm thinking, there's a line under it, so I'm thinking this is part of this story. So uh, basically this uh, story here, oh, okay, well that's not then. If that goes with that story, yeah, this, anyway, not modular. Uh, this is, and so this, uh, even though you put uh, lines here and here to try to clarify it, uh, this is a huge no-no. Not even the New York Times would do this. New York Times does odd things in its front pages. It does not keep non-modularity all the time, but it would not do this. Uh, no newspaper would do that. Um, so, Uh, need a jump headline on page two. Uh, we have the jump, but we don't have a headline over it. We have another story here that's just, a, I think, a totally separate story. The front page has one, two, three, four stories. So you were supposed to go with five. Um, I'm not going to... Those of you who end up with four, I know there's some... Actually, I sent another story for those groups that only had four stories. Uh, so, um, I sent it a couple of days ahead so that you wouldn't have an excuse not to have five stories. Uh, but some of you still didn't have five stories. But, uh, but this is odd that this, I believe, comes from my story and all it is is a graphic standing by itself. So, no, that isn't. No, it does go with this story. It looks like a, 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 same coloring even of uh, one of the one of the uh, graphics that I sent out. So um, it, uh, it does go with this story below it. Um, anyway, as far as uh, headlines and stuff go, um, shop lots. Um, I, mean, I would call this a mall, new mall to be opened in 2019. Um, shop lots is kind of awkward. Never heard it referred to that way, and it's not common. Um, the uh, subheadline is apparently supposed to be a headline, a uh, subheadline, not a summary sentence. So the size is okay, but there's two problems with it. First off, the line, the, the word marching, broken, uh, hyphenated, we don't do that. Uh, and five lines, uh, one column, the maximum is supposed to be four lines. And the fifth line has only one word on it, so it has way too much space. So it seems like there could be a way to to get rid of that at that fifth line. Um, again, we use shop lots. We don't. We try to not repeat words in the same, not only in the same headline, but also not in a sub in the headline and a subheadline. And sometimes it's impossible. Sometimes you find yourself caught where you just simply don't have another word, but shop lots is not a great word anyway. So uh, try not to repeat the same term in both the headline and the subheadline. Uh, there might have to be some, like Chiman or something like that. But uh, you, uh, uh, anyway, uh, so this headline needs some work. Chiman's people welcoming new shop lots marching into their area. Um, and this one would be very easy to to make into. First off, uh, this might actually be where you would use the. Um, so it'd be marching into the area, uh, but it'd probably be better say uh, coming nearby or something. Look for other words to use in that case. But we're going to try to go with four lines, not five lines, which would not. 
uh, be that hard to work on this, look at some synonyms and make four lines out of it. It's actually, I mean, again, you we've got all this extra space here. So not only is it five, I could actually overlook five lines. It, it does, it is done occasionally. I've done it myself occasionally. But uh, when I saw the rules in the layout book that I that I made copies of and showed you earlier in the semester, uh, and I and where it says one column should be only three to four lines, uh, whether it's a headline or subheadline, I started thinking about it and I agreed with it. Even though some of the uh, at least one of the newspapers that one of those thirty newspapers uh, that I copied out of American, you know, of America has five line, one column headlines, and I've done it in the past. So it's not a real, real rigid rule. There are professional publications that go to five lines, one column, uh, including my own. But I started looking at my own and I decided they were right, that it, looked, that it looked like too much headline to go to five column or five lines in a one column headline. So I adopted what the textbook said, uh, recognizing that um, even looking at my own one column headlines, it, it was just too much. So try to stay with three or four in one column headlines, I, it looks better. Uh, vertical justification needed here. Uh, this white space here is okay. Although if it, uh, you might be able to bring, bring that down uh, or even put it to the right. This might be better. This uh, 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 caption here might be better over here on the right. Uh, get it away, uh, it just balances a, a little better, get the caption away from the text and put the photo to the left and the caption to the right. Probably look a little better. Um, too much uh, space in here. Too much space, multiple places on this headline. Um, five, this one is more of a summary sentence here. Uh, taking a closer look here at this uh, headline um, or this uh, uh, summary sentence, uh, it's okay. Um, again, another hyphenated word, just don't do that. Uh, this is kind of a, this is a label head, uh, but you, you can't split the word. Um, and uh, does demand a subheadline to try to, you know, try to give the rest of the story. Um, has becoming is bad grammar in the subheadline here. Too much space over here. And of course, again, this non a modular format not acceptable. If you are, when you are, uh, here we have a, apparently this one is justified, we have these big gaps. Again, we don't justify headlines. Uh, this one has a period at the end, so it suggests it's actually a, pull, a, a, a summary sentence, and it can, it could be, but summary sentences are to be smaller. Um, so you need to decide, uh, you know, if it's a summary sentence or a headline. If it's a headline that doesn't have a period at the end. It, it's worded in such a way it could be either one, actually. But uh, subheadlines are bigger, summary sentences are smaller. Um, a lot of gaps here. Um, so I, I would not do that regardless. Uh, get rid of the gaps uh, by going flush left. A lot of extra space over here. If you were going to have a new story on your page two, again, most of you only had five stories and they were supposed to all start in the front page. But if you have a new story on the front page or on the second page, it would typically be best to put it at the top just for layout purposes uh, to make your second page look good too. Uh, so in this case, Forgetting about the other sins committed here, uh, the, the, the full complete story should be at the top with the jump underneath it. Uh, in which case, well, the headline also has a problem here that the headline um, 
the rule for in our critique sheet and by that other textbook that I that I used in my PowerPoint says in a broadsheet six column uh, headline uh, is only one line plus a subheadline. So this has two lines, and again that that is only uh, for emergencies, uh, war declared, major earthquake kills 100 people, whatever. You might go with a double line on your on your six column headline, but not for uh, Chinese students excluded from scholarship policy. And that's not uh, not a reason to do it. Again, I'm trying to give you a taste of a lot of different examples here, uh, in case you know, so that you can start on your project without waiting for me to give you an individual grade. Uh, these are very, very small headlines. I, since this is in PDF, I can't tell you what size that is. But that, these, these, almost all the headlines here are too small, except the top one. Um, and they don't fill the space. Um, but just looking at, hopefully you can see, and by looking at the whole page, this is not a very strong page just from the, just looking at the headlines. So you have several problems here. You have only one fairly si good-sized photo, and that photo has no person in it. It's a picture of something you're not even sure what it is, unless you know what it is. But if you're from somebody who's not seen that and not doesn't know, it, it does have a caption. But basically, it's it's not a picture that you can just look at and know what it's about. There's uh, we like to have people in our pictures. Um, and this is a very, you know, people add a lot of interest to a photo. And so we want photos with people in whenever possible. Uh, that's why I, a lot of the construction pictures I called B-level uh, photos at best because they didn't have any people in them. Uh, any of these pictures could be done, uh, could be made a lot better by putting a person in it. Uh, some of these construction photos, if you wanted to retake them, just put a person in them and retake them. Uh, but anyway, the headlines are, are much too small. Um, and in fact, in a two column, the rule is a two column headline, and this is what this one is here. Uh, it's not supposed to be, because without a box, it should go over the photo. But with a two column uh, headline, it's, at, it's uh, um, well, small in size, first off at the top of the page, um, you can go three lines on a two-column headline. Uh, and that would, uh, even with the same headline, would make it a lot bigger and a little more interesting uh, on that page. But all these, besides the top one, all of these are very small headlines, and they just don't carry, graphically carry that page very well. Uh, remember that our headlines by our style and let me talk about style just a second. Again, every newspaper has to have style. Uh, every newspaper has to have some level of consistency, not only in how the stories are written, that's AP style, typically, um, at least in much of the world, but also, um, but even if they're not going AP, every newspaper in the world should have a style. So the stories are written similarly, they abbreviate similarly, they headline similarly, they have they they handle courtesy titles similar similarly. Uh, you you every newspaper should have a style book of some sh some sort. How do we handle things? And but now in this case, you also every newspaper should have a layout style sheet. Uh, in essence, my critique sheet is my style sheet. It does not cover some subjects, and maybe I should cover them more specifically. Uh, some of the things that. Uh, that I've seen that are different than the way I would lay them out. But to the degree that it exists, you know, that, that uh, I put stuff into the critique sheet, that's our newspaper style sheet. Um, and there's stuff in it that doesn't agree with every other newspaper. Uh, the idea of boxing uh, one story if two stories are next to each other. Well, other newspapers put lines every place. Well, that's 
my style that I have set up for our newspaper that I want you to use the boxes instead of the lines. Um, one of those things that also is part of your local style sheet is what what uh, what um, you know what tech or what uh, what's the right word um, you know what kind of type what typeface are we going to use what size for body text headlines things like that so one of the rules on the style sheet on my critique sheet is that in our newspaper we're going to use sans serif headlines sans serif would be like Arial. And so this, this is a serif one, so this would break the pattern, break the style. So, so far, I think all the other pages we looked at had sans serif headlines. This one does not. So if we were to put all these together as one publication, this would stand, this would be, wait a second, something's wrong here. Uh, again, the reader may not understand what's wrong, but they say, this looks very different than the pages. It looks like it's from another newspaper or something. Uh, because it doesn't fit in stylistically uh, for a number of reasons. Headlines are too small. Headlines are, are serif instead of sans serif. It doesn't fit in to the rest of the newspaper we looked at so far. So uh, try to keep the style. Um, there's uh, problems. There's uh, no vertical justification in any of the stories. Um, so it's a very gray page in that uh, there's only one good size photo, and the, and all the and there's only one reasonably sized headline. So that makes this page extremely gray uh, because of lack of uh, photos and lack of uh, of graphic uh, strong graphically strong headlines. And again, it has one jump and it has no headline to it. So uh, this one does have five stories on the front, and one of them jumping. So it complies in that sense, but uh, it misses out on a lot of other aspects of it. Just uh, going to zoom in a little bit before we go to the next page. Uh, I see we have a lot of variety in the headlines. So we have some that are serif. This one's sans serif. This one is uh, a modern sort of uh, uh, sans serif. Uh, this is serif. This one's serif. Down here we have serif. So we have a hodgepodge. And again, great inconsistency. Uh, this graphic here. It's just too small to, I mean, I, you can't even see what is down here. If there's something in this part of this graphic, it's hard to see it. And so it makes it, uh, why do we have this? Or why do we have all this dead space here at the, uh, at the bottom of this graphic? That somebody just like copied it from something and threw it in there, and there's just nothing here at the bottom of this graphic that makes it worth having. So even if it's a graphic, um, you need to crop junk out of it. I mean, if there's no value to something, you need to crop it out. Um, I guess this is maybe supposed to be the app. Um, okay, I, I guess I understand what it's trying to do, but it's, uh, yeah, a lot of dead space there. Uh, maybe uh, rather than that, actually take a picture of, of it on somebody's mobile phone. So you have the, at least, even if all you're seeing is a hand and the mobile phone, so you understand what it is, but uh, a lot of dead space for not a lot of value to that, to this. Uh, uh, the indents here are also too big. Uh, that should be just a, and they're not consistent. This one is about one, two, three, four, uh, about five. This indent, these indents are about five characters in. We're looking at uh, the size that I told you on the critique sheet is more like uh, two, two and a half characters is all on the on the uh, indents. Um, and this, so these are some of these are too much, and they're not consistent. This one is about three characters in this story. This one, these ones are like five characters. So 
you need to get your indents consistent um, and they should be smaller uh, this one is more this one's even maybe a little bit too big but it's in the ballpark uh, this one is too too much uh, indent on this on this one on the left Kind of zoom out first and uh, show the whole page. Um, this is a pretty good page as far as uh, the layout goes. Um, they chose to ignore my rules and boxes and did lines instead. Um, again, would look very different than the rest of the paper. So every Again, the reason why you have a style sheet is so that it looks consistent. You don't have one page with lines, another page with boxes, and so forth. You, you, you have a consistent uh, newspaper and its layout. Um, so we have a major uh, headline up at the top. This line uh, is excessively large. This dash is a one big dash. Um, and I'm not even sure what it means. The headline, uh, one belt, one road in Malaysia mixed. I don't even know what they're, they, I'm, if they mean mixed responses to, uh, to it. But the way it's worded is not too very clear. Um, single quotes on, in headlines, not double quotes, single quotes. Uh, I didn't mention in the, I think in the very first one, I, I failed to point out, um, but let me point it out here, that uh, very few newspapers use uh, uh, what we call title capitalization. Some of these stories here are using title capitalization. This is title capitalization. This one down here is title capitalization. And that is the old style of how I'm not even sure that books do it anymore, but uh, uh, books traditionally capitalize every keyword and lowercase words like articles, they and the prepositions, in, uh, with, uh, those sorts of words are all lowercase, but all the other words are uppercase, that's title capitalization, and almost no newspaper in the world uses title capitalization anymore. Uh, they some, some of them are using all caps, but most of them use what we call down style, which is uh, sentence capitalization. Some call it down style. I, I call it sentence capitalization. Um, in other words, you, you're capitalizing the headline like you would if it were a sentence. So we have uh, two headlines out of the five using title capitalization, which is very passe, and uh, and then. Uh, three of them that are using sentence capitalization. So inconsistency in that. Uh, same thing on page two. Uh, we have one using down style, one using sent, uh, title capitalization. Um, so there's a lot of good things about this. Um, this might be a little narrow for this many heads. Uh, let's go down. Uh, the overall impact of this page looks pretty good. Um, you might notice here that we have uh, a, a difference. Um, so we have a four column, and this is more or less two column over here. Down here, kind of the same thing, except this two column is different size than this two column. Um, it looks a little weird to do it that way. And so I, I can't really recommend that you, uh, um, I've actually, well, I've made that mistake myself, let me put it that way. As you start playing with wits, and, and your desktop publishing allows you to do this sort of stuff so easily, but having uh, two stories that are more or less two columns wide, but one two columns wider than the other two column, makes it kind of weird. Um, and I, I recommend against that. Decide 
which one you want to go with and go with that width uh, to make it more consistent. Um, it is split up between it with that uh, six column story in the middle and that helps. But still, when you pull, look back at the whole at the whole page, it looks a little strange to have um, you know two two column stories and they're both and they're not the same two columns. Um, so I, I I would recommend against that. Um, and probably not harshly, but to some degree, grade the way I feel. Um, don't center headlines. Again, it seems like this person is just trying to make this headline big, but not uh, too big or whatever. I mean, in this case, this dash, even if this was worded correctly, which I think is not worded correctly, but even if it were, um, then N could come on this next line. Remember, you can click in front of the I and N and hit Shift Enter, and it'll be a line break. Kick that over, and then you can enlarge the entire uh, the headline, and there's no reason not to have the headline even bigger than it is. Of course, I think it needs to be reworded because it's not clear what it means, uh, but that's another issue. Uh, these are more or less within three. To, anyway, this one is four, li four characters off. I'll accept that. Um, the other the other headlines uh, fit in you know pretty close. This one here is a little bit. This is a little excessive here under eyes. Um, and the headline again doesn't quite make a lot of sense anyway. Should be probably rewritten. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. This is one. Uh, this is more or less a side saddle headline. Again, the rule is it should be boxed uh, instead of the one below it. There's no reason to box the one below it. Um, this is the one that should be boxed because it has a size saddle. The headline does not go over the top. So if you're going to box one of these two stories, it'd be the one at the top. And the one at the top may not be at the top. It may be that uh, it would make more sense to put this one at the top and put this one under it uh, at the bottom. But um, if you're going to do side saddle, this is where you could consider do it uh, ragged left instead of ragged right. What we, is another way of referring to it. In other words, uh, have it line up on the right side and not lined up on the left side. So you're pushing it to the right. You're aligning to the right. Um, side saddles are kind of hard to know what to do with some kinds, but I, I think probably the majority of them in this sort of situation, aligned to the right instead of to the left, um, and it's boxed. Uh, yeah. The the grammar in this is not right. I mean, there's not uh, the disappointment responses doesn't. That's just awkward. Um, in this one, it's uh, might be better. I mean, just a standard headline probably be better. Uh, student express disappointment in Chiman Canteen would would fit and uh, and be a normal headline. Um, but this is awkward. Uh, this you know, Chiman Canteen colon disappointment responses doesn't make any this awkward in English. Um, I know it's probably you know it's not your first language, but uh, be careful with your headlines. To, that one doesn't work. Uh, in English. Subheadline, uh, you're more or less saying what I just said in the subheadline. Uh, this of, I, I can't try to figure out what, what we have here in this headline, or the subheadline, uh, how this of ended up clear over in the right, and it almost looked like it has to just be spaces, space, 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 space. Um, 
there's no reason to, uh, it doesn't appear to be justified because this would that would also push low quality and put a big space there whatever it is you can't have that space between of and complain uh, way excessive space there um, and you can't have as far as I go you can't have all that extra space to the right of the uh, of the sub headline the fact that they are pretty close to being the same length if of were pushed to the left uh, you might get away with having a little extra space on the right but this has a lot of extra space to the right um, I understand let me put it this way if you're if you're Keeping it this size because the rule is the subheadline is half the size of the main headline. I would not keep that rule. If I had to choose between uh, having a lot of space to the right of this headline or making it bigger than half the size, I would make it bigger than half the size. Uh, if you're going to break one rule, that's a better that's the better rule to break, uh, probably, and maybe something in between. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger. Uh, and still leave a little bit of extra white space in the right if, if you're actually committed to this headline and not writing a bit different headline. That's, that's a presumption that I should not make, actually. You should be willing to rewrite your headline if you have to to make it fit right. But if you're trying to stand four lines and you're trying to not get excessively big compared to the main headline, um, then I would maybe make it, uh, it looks like it's, about 30 point now pretty good size headline already um, I would use desktop publishing's ability to go up one point size at a time and make this maybe go up uh, at least a couple more point sizes may up to if this is 30 maybe go to 33 something like that um, and leaving a little extra space on the right get that of back to complain I don't again I don't know why that's out there um, In uh, well, first off, over here again, that this person decided to put lines underneath the subheadline. Again, that'd be a matter of style. I mean, I don't. I'm not going to deduct points if you decided to do something a little different with lines. I didn't say not to do it, but that would definitely be a decision that the newspaper would make as a whole. You wouldn't if you're going to put a line between the subheadline and the and the uh, story something like that you would be consistent uh, you wouldn't just do it once in a while uh, and it wouldn't be just on one page and not into the pages that would end up being a stylistic here's a line here into this one so some pages have lines between the uh, this one has a line underneath the subheadline this one has another one underneath the subheadline this person kind of likes that style and I I'm not saying it's a, a bad style although uh, we see a lot of difference. This line is lower compared to the headline, be, as far as between the headline, subheadline, and the story. It's real close to the byline. And this one here is closer to the headline. So you need, a, even if you're going to make a style that we put a line under the, the uh, subheadline, you need to be consistent how you do it. And this one is not consistent with this one down here. Uh, so you need to be careful with that. Um, I did say you could go two lines on a, on a six column for in a six column broadsheet. I decided I would disagree with with uh, the other textbook and allow a two line four column headline. The, the rule by the other textbook was one line in that situation. I think with a with a broadsheet you could go two lines there, and so I'm I'm going to stay. So I, I adjusted my my uh, critique sheet to where you could to use two lines. Um, you do see that it makes it quite powerful. You have a lot of words there that you can make that quite a powerful headline going two lines and four, four columns. Tight in here, this, uh, the bottom of this box, with a lot of tightness overall, the, uh, Tight in the text over in the right side of the box, touching the, the line. Uh, left is tight, but not touching, but still tight. Uh, too tight between uh, the headline below it. Uh, so this headline needs to come down a little bit further. 
um, and you left extra, extra spaces already to try to uh, fill the space or something. I don't know. There's a lot of extra space between these paragraphs in both of these stories. Uh, in fact, in most of your stories, too much space between paragraphs. Um, I hadn't noticed it up here, but yeah, in in newspapers we don't put uh, a lot of extra space between paragraphs. You have your indent to provide that breathing space in a sense. You have an indent instead of uh, space between paragraphs. Uh, as I said, you can put space between paragraphs if you need to create your vertical justification, uh, but you don't do it throughout the story. Um, so you get the spaces out of there. Uh, we're, we're trying to, I mean, the news, at the daily paper I was at, they went all the way down to nine point body text to try to get a bit more news in. So newspapers are very jealous of their space. Uh, they don't want to throw away space and space between uh, paragraphs is throwing away space. There's a lot of space between uh, between some of those paragraphs. So get the, the space out. Um, anyway, the interior, the, the uh, text inside of this box is touching at the bottom at the left at the right. So you got to uh, fix that. Uh, the third line here is too short. You need to fix that. This is apparently in justified text. It has false spacing between. You don't justify your headlines. Um, it just looks bad. So they're they're always they're not centered and they're not ragged. They they are ragged right. They're aligned left, ragged right. Uh, not justified headlines. Uh, this person has, uh, at a couple of spots here, put the captions um, in the next column. So here's a caption up here. And in page two, same thing, a caption up here rather than underneath the photo. The norm, the, the expectation is typically to have the caption underneath the photo. And that's where I would typically put it. Um, this uh, can be confusing to put the caption. You, yes, it's bold and yes it's italics but uh, and it seems to be a little tighter to the photo uh, it's not something I can recommend uh, because we don't want to confuse our readers um, if you have if you have it on the side of a photo it's because uh, it's like the other ones where I've that I've done it and on previous uh, examples and that I've gone through today where it's on the right perhaps, and it's floating, so you have some extra white space. Uh, that white space is seen, if it's, uh, if it's not excessive, seen as a good thing to let your story breathe a little bit if, you're, if you have a caption to the right of it, occasionally, not all the time. But having it uh, in the same column with the body text is, like I said, that, that is potentially confusing and not a style that not a style that I don't think I've ever seen a daily uh, professional newspaper use, so I would recommend against it. Not the norm, definitely, and uh, can be problematic. So I would not put captions uh, like that in the column with this story. I would not do that. Uh, tight, tight, tight again, a lot of tight um, text in boxes. Need to learn how to get that text away from the edge of the boxes like I showed you this last week. Okay, let me go through, real quickly through one more. Um, we'll call it a day. So I didn't get to even 10, let alone 20. Um, I'm trying to give you as much input as I can, again, so you can go on with the next one. Um, Let me go out and look at the whole page. Uh, this is a centered headline, uh, just because the person I think was didn't couldn't figure out what else to write or whatever, so they decided to center it so it didn't look so obvious. But this is still really obvious uh, that uh, they didn't want to write, didn't want to try any harder in that headline. Uh, but there's two rules. This one breaks. One is it's centered. Well, three rules. Centered it shouldn't be. Too much white space shouldn't have. Two lines instead of one line in a six column story should only be one line and then a subheadline if you want to. So this breaks three rules in one effort. Um, 
got a triple play here, so to speak. Uh, but it also has a misspelling. Disappointment is misspelled. Um, and it's title capitalization. So actually there's five errors with this headline. Five and one. Um, so don't center. Don't misspell. Uh, don't leave extra space. Don't use title capitalization. Uh, use a sentence capitalization. Um, the other headlines on the page are also apparently all title capitalization, apparently. Uh, don't. Uh, like I said, it's, if you look at those 30 front pages of American papers, I don't think you'll... If you find one title, title capitalization among 30 papers, I'll be surprised. You'll see all caps, more than I like, and you'll see sentence, ca sentence capitalization. You, you, if you see any title capitalization, uh, I don't remember any, uh, but we'll, we'll see that over the next week or so. Uh, very gray in the lower left. Um, yeah, there's three photos on the page, but uh, these two are very close together. Um, I would, I mean, if you just put this story to the right and these two stories to the left, that would help uh, because then you would have a golden triangle. You'd have a picture, you'd have another picture over on the right, and then you'd have this picture to the left. So if, the, if, this, if this story here were over to the right two columns, or in the right four columns, I guess, guess you would say, and these two columns over here over to the left, uh, it would have be a better layout. Um, but the art is pretty, uh, first off, this isn't real strong art either. A lot of, uh, uh, let's blow it up and take a look, better close, uh, a better look at it. But uh, uh, also, before I get down there, besides the space and the, and the uh, um, Headline here, we have inconsistent spacing in the story, some really gapping uh, indents here, some narrow indents up here. Can't do that. That looks terrible. Um, the, uh, you know, too much space here, too much space in this headline. Um, This whole story is very spacey, a lot of line spacing, space between paragraphs, very spacey story here. Um, extra spaces in all these stories, don't do it, get rid of those extra spaces. Uh, so uh, this is another one using spaces between paragraphs, we don't do that. Um, this picture, if you're gonna take a picture of somebody as they're talking to you, I would recommend you take quite a few different pictures to make sure you have a good one. Um, this is, you know, not a, not a great picture. Um, if you took 10 pictures, you'd have a, probably find a, get a better one out of the 10. Um, a lot of backs of heads, very small images, uh, definitely could uh, crop off uh, a good chunk of the story here or this, uh, picture here and some off the top to make the images bigger. Still a lot of backs of heads, but um, it would not be hard to do some cropping on this picture to make it better than it is. Um, so I think you should, but I don't think you should be shy about taking pictures. Uh, whoever took the picture, get in there and get closer to people. Uh, so you may be so a couple of, you know, you look at the end of one of these tables, shoot this direction. So you see in the background, a lot of people, and those are small heads, but in the foreground, you have people close to the camera. It's a much, much better picture. So get some people in tight and, and the background with lots of people in the canteen. Um, but this sort of picture, again, could be retaken easily. Like, you know, take five minutes ago to retake this picture for whoever, you know, whatever team is, has this story. Uh, and get come out with a much better picture than this. I can understand we had some pictures kind of like, that seemed kind of like this about election night. We had all sorts of people gathered there. I mean, those pictures could have also been better, but they can't be retaken. So you're stuck with what you have. This one can be retaken in five minutes. So uh, there's not a lot of excuse for an editor to accept this picture as being the best picture of the canteen is not a very good picture of the canteen. Um, so I would get, I would go, 
you know, again, go to the side of the table, get some people um, eating, and uh, and then the background, lots of people, um, and so you have some something to, that people are going to look at it, expressions on faces and stuff like that. You need humanize it. Um, again, there's just not enough art on this page right now. I think and this this picture here doesn't fill the one column even, which doesn't make any sense. At least fill the one column. Um, there's no uh, verb in the headline and no subheadline. Problematic. No verb in this headline. Problematic. Uh, misspelling or disappointment. Problematic. Um, this actually should be too open soon. Uh, that it is clearly in the future. Um, but I can live with the opening. You do need to work harder in your headlines. A lot of you need to work harder in your headlines. Again, that 25% of your grade, um, and thus I mean, you you can, you kind of it's kind of instinctive for you to think that what you spend the most time on should be worth the most. Well, that tells you you didn't spend enough time on your headlines because <laughs> uh, it's worth 25% of your grade. Uh, your layout is worth 25% of the grade. So you may have worked on the on the layout. Uh, and thought, well, that's where I'm putting all my time in is in the layout. And so instinctively you think that should be worth more, but it isn't. Uh, it's worth the same as your headlines uh, because they're both very, very important. Uh, not to say, again, the design is, is extremely important, 25% of your grade. Um, but headlining, if you're going to be a professional, you have to learn how to headline. And so I, I increased the value of that a little bit, I think, uh, uh, over the last year because of, I needed people to think about their headlines. Um, in, in Kazakhstan also, I had the students, again, because English is their second or third or fourth language, they had a hard time with headlines too. But that, that doesn't mean we, I mean, that's, you have to deal with it. <laughs> you have to deal with it. And it's not like you're writing, uh, I mean, it, 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 in some cases, you, I mean, you did write these stories. So if you hope, have any hope of being a decent writer, you should at least be able to write a headline. And that's a lot shorter than a story. So, I mean, you have your story, that's one thing. I can see you having some grammatical problems in your story because it's not your first language. Um, you simply have to do whatever you have to do to make sure your headlines are grammatically correct, are spelled correctly, and that you're... You know, go to that thesaurus as much as you have to to try to fill that fill that space uh, with a word that makes makes some sense. Um, I recognize it's going to be hard, and that's why I'll give you a little bit of a break, but this not this big of a break. You know, that that's not that not that big of a break. You got to be able to do better than that. Um, so you know, work on that. Uh, you know, like this one here. It's even more than four. I mean, it's four here, but the, this whole, you have extra space in the right of, of the mall, and then you have all this extra space underneath it. Uh, that won't be deducted a whole lot, maybe a little bit. Uh, this one, I don't know if the person doesn't even know how to go up one point at a time. There's no reason for this one to be this small. This one can be uh, increased to fill the space. Again, Desktop publishing allows you to go up one point at a time if you have to, even even a half a point to fill the space. Um, this is way too much space. I've got to, you know, these ones like this have to be major deductions. Um, and this one here has to be a major deduction. It's way, 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 J just kind of kissing off, You're trying to do a good job, I'm trying to keep the, the, the rules on headlines when, when it comes out like that. You, you know, I not coming to class, not reading the critique sheet, something. You, you have to understand that's going to be a major deduction. Um, that's just not anywhere. If, if you were to take this page and go try to get a job as an editor, they'd laugh at you. There's no way they're going to hire somebody who doesn't know how to do better than this. So you just can't do it. Uh, so if we're trying to build our portfolio. We can't be building it with headlines like this. They've got to fill the space better than that. So. 
Okay, well, we're after uh, past time. Um, hopefully, I gave you some ideas of the stuff I'm looking at. Um, I probably won't grade nearly as harshly in this one. Well, I know I won't, and as I will in the next assignment. I expect you to learn from this one. Um, but some of the stuff that you should know that I went over over and over and over again, um, I'm going to have to take some deductions off of it. Uh, other stuff, you know, some stuff I can kind of, you know, kind of ignore, but some stuff I can't ignore. So, um, by the way, this box and the extra line is excessive here, too. So we got extra lines and boxes. No need for that. Okay, thank you.